In distal extension cases, stress breaking can be incorporated by means of preventing leverage from being transmitted to abutment teeth, rot wire retentive arm, part type retentive arm and all of the above. So usually we tend to get lost in such kind of questions because they are technically so confusing. Let's try to break it down. Distal extension means Kennedy's class 1 and 2. That means there is no posterior tooth present. So the denture is going to swing along an axis. For example, here, if these teeth are all present and this is the edentulous area, the denture tends to swing. So all the load is going to come on the terminal abutment. We don't want the load to come on this abutment and that is why we are going to minimize the stress or break the stress or equalize the stress, correct? Now this is called philosophy of design. That means you are going to incorporate a philosophy in the design of a distal extension to reduce forces on the terminal abutment. So this stress breaking can be incorporated by how will you use stress breaking mechanism in a distal extension. For that we need to know that there are three philosophies of design. One is stress equalization, physiologic basing and broad stress distribution. Now if you look at this terminal abutment, we are using broad stress distribution because we have covered the entire palate. Physiologic basing means using functional impression for the tissue so that the pressure can go onto the tissues. The question however is about stress equalization. Now stress equalization or stress breaking can be based on a few mechanical considerations in the framework design. So the denture that you are going to fabricate, you are going to modify some designs in it so that you can minimize the stress on the abutment tooth. Here are a few examples of stress breaker mechanism. So you can use a movable joint or you can use a flexible type of a joint. Now movable joint examples are the attachments. So you have hinge attachment, ball and socket attachments, sleeve and cylinder attachment. Or you can use a flexible type of a connection like a rod wire connector or a split major connector. Now the options here are very interesting. Look at the option. It says prevent leverage from being transmitted to the abutment teeth. So yes, you can, you have to provide stress breaking by this mechanism. That is by preventing any forces on the abutment teeth by rot wire retentive arm. That means if you use a flexible retentive arm compared to a casted retentive arm, then the forces are reduced on the terminal abutment because this is more flexible. Rot wire is more flexible compared to cobalt chromium. Bar type retentive arm, that means you use an I bar so if this is your tooth for example, you use an eye bar and you use a guide plane and use a mesial rest, use an RPI system. So here the forces are broken down on the tooth. It is not a, it is not a, the retainer design is not such that it is going to put detrimental forces on the tooth. This is going to break down the forces from all directions because it is encircling the tooth in a split kind of a way. So this is also going to reduce the forces on the terminal abutment tooth which has a stress breaking action. So the correct answer is all of the above. All three of these are ways of preventing or reducing forces on the terminal abutment by stress breaking philosophy.